Greetings and salutations. In this video, we're going to take a look around Ubuntu 19.04 Disco Dingo. I have been testing this for the last couple of days and I figured I would show you a little bit about it. This is not going to be an official review. This is not even in the beta stage yet. Before we get into it, let me explain a little bit about the Ubuntu release cycle for those of you who are new to Linux or new to the channel and you're going, what's going on here? Ubuntu is distributed by a company called Canonical and once every six months they release a new version of Ubuntu. Every two years they release a long-term support version of Ubuntu. That's the one that most people use because it has five years of support and it is uh, backported as time goes on. We have point releases that come along. As a matter of fact, we had Ubuntu 18.04.2 just come out that enables uh, newer hardware to work better with Ubuntu. So the long-term support versions are very well supported and extremely stable. However, every six months, Canonical puts out a version of Ubuntu and the interim releases, the ones between the long-term support versions, are just a snapshot of where Ubuntu technology is at. You can use these, no problem at all. Uh, they tend to be just a bit buggy. Sometimes you may see a bug that's filed for something like this. It just doesn't get fixed because it's an interim version. They just sort of kick the can on down to the next version of Ubuntu and they'll get it fixed by then. However, you may be in a situation where there's some brand new feature that you absolutely just have to have. You might want the very latest and greatest in software and the interim releases offer that or for some reason or other it may run better on your hardware. The downside to running these is that they're only supported for about nine months and after that you have to reinstall the newer version or you're going to have to do an in-place upgrade and sometimes the upgrades grow great and sometimes they break stuff so it's a bit more risky to be out here on the cutting edge of Ubuntu but this particular release has gotten a lot of attention and we're gonna take a look at what's happening with this release and what's in it first of all let's let's kinda of go through some dates here that are posted and by the way I will share this article because the folks at OMG Ubuntu are going to update it as we get closer and closer to the release so if you really want to you can check it out uh, like maybe once every couple of days to see if anything changed I'm not that big of a fanboy myself but I will put it a link in the description anyway so the feature freeze happened on February the 21st that's the major features that are going into the new system at that point they say okay we've put in whatever we're going to and we're gonna work it out and make it work and then the next is the UI freeze which happened on Thursday the 14th uh, which was like last week from the recording of this video which means that they're not going to be changing anything more about the user interface they've got that locked in now coming up here on april the first they have the kernel freeze which means that they'll pretty much stick with whatever kernel is out at that point point. and of course there will be security updates to that kernel as the release rolls on in, in its support cycle uh, but they will we'll stick pretty much with whatever kernel version they're on on April the 1st and we've already talked about the official release date and that is uh, well the beta release date which is kinda cool uh, that's when you'll get a kind of a more polished version that will get fewer updates and that's happening on March the 28th you can install a beta actually you can install an alpha and do this because I've done it many times but you can definitely do it with a beta and that will roll into an official version just install your updates uh, sometimes the alphas break themselves you have to watch that that's why I don't really recommend using an alpha on a production system at all because you could get some updates and it'll break and it's a, it's a testing phase the betas tend to be a bit more stable so what features are we looking for well honestly not a whole lot feature wise uh, we're going to get a new gnome desktop a new version uh, 3.32 and we got Linux kernel 5.0 so that is what they're hoping is going to happen there unfortunately GS Connect is not going to show up that is something that would have been very cool to have 
and that comes to us actually from the KDE Plasma project. The KDE Plasma desktop has an application that is integrated in there that will work with your Android device, like your phone. You can just plug it in and it'll sync things up. It's a very cool little application and it's super easy to use. They were hoping to kind of port that over to the GNOME desktop environment so that it would have the same functionality, but it doesn't look like it was available. Another thing that they're talking about is fractional scaling support. Now what that means is that you'll be able to enlarge the screen, just everything you see on the screen by you know, 125% or 150% or whatever. Now that is useful for people who have very high DPI displays or if for whatever reason you just want to have a really big screen. Maybe accessibility like, you know, I like big fonts because I don't see that well. So I like to have my screen with large fonts and to do videos. So that's a nice thing. Unfortunately, it only works if you're running the Wayland X uh, replacement that is... Uh, coming along here it's not quite ready yet it's a display server it basically tells your video card what to draw on the screen and where it is and X has been around forever it's ancient it goes back to the mid 1980s it's so old and they're working on replacing that with Wayland um, so hopefully at some point they'll get the scaling going in X as well I've heard that it will be backported because honestly most people will use X uh, X, Wayland doesn't work with every application the, yet. It's not quite there. So we will see how that goes. Uh, performance patches. They're talking about really speeding things up in the GNOME environment for Ubuntu, which is, is actually pretty cool. So that's what's going into this. And so far, it has turned out to be a really cool system. So let's jump down and actually look at the desktop itself. Here it is. This is what it looks like. The only thing that I have done is to increase the fonts uh, to make them easier for me to see and to make them easier for you to see as well. But this is what we're getting right now with the daily build and this is up to date. All the packages have been installed. I have put some of my own software in here to make sure that it will run with 1904. See when you actually write software you have to look at all the new versions of everything to make sure there's not something that you need to change so it's compatible. Thus far, it seems to work just fine. So I have installed XBT, which is my backup application, and as you can see, it boots right up and it does. There's no error message, so that is very cool. It makes me happy. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else can we look at while we're here? Uh, we will look at uh, the Snap applications installed. There was a rumor going around a week or two ago that said that Canonical was going to be dumping the regular Ubuntu repositories, you know, the ones you interact with with the apt-get and apt commands, on, and they were going to go to all Snaps. No, this is what's installed from a Snap, and right now you will see that we have different versions of uh, parts of the GNOME desktop experience going on here. And I'm assuming that that will change over time. Uh, so let's see what version of Nautilus we have. Let's go here and we will open up. Uh, where is it? Right there. It's right there, dummy. Click the button. Okay. Running in a virtual machine, the mouse gets a little weird. So we are on 3.31. Not quite 3.32, but we're getting there, which is uh, really kind of cool. I can tell you that running in a virtual machine, this is very zippy. The virtual machine that you're looking at here right now, it has one CPU core and four gigabytes of memory and it does quite well. And the reason why I'm only assigning it one is that a strange quirk with VirtualBox 6.0 version.4, so it's 6.0.4 is the, it, is that the more kernels, the, uh, the more, threads I give it in the CPU, the slower it runs. <laughs> so I don't know what's up with that, man. It's kind of strange, but it's working well enough for me to be able to show you guys around. Uh, so uh, this is the new Yaru theme that you're looking at with the icons here. Also, you will notice that this is now solid. One of the things that the GNOME project has done is they have uh, changed this from uh, not being transitionally transparent so uh, I can show you what that if I kind of get out of here and 
scan down and go to a blank page on my own desktop you see how that's transparent you can see behind it there okay so now if I open that up it changes if that feature is going away because they it doesn't work very well with light backgrounds that's what they said so you know I've got my little slides and everything already open here then I do something like that and just blow the illusion but you know it's an illusion anyway so it really doesn't matter um, so yeah what have we got for a kernel let's look at that the kernel is 5.0.0-7 so this would be the Ubuntu version of the Linux kernel they do take the kernel and then uh, they have their own version that they release with their own operating system and make a few changes hold back some patches whatever they do and they have several kernel series going at the same time which is extremely confusing for new users but uh, after a, you get your mind wrapped around how that works when you realize about all the different versions of Ubuntu that are running at the same time it, it kind of starts to make sense uh, so that is the kernel that we currently have right there let's see what we've got for LibreOffice and see what version that we are looking at. Here we go. And we'll open the about. So this is version 6.2.1.2, which is pretty close to the absolute latest version. That's very cool. So if you need the very latest LibreOffice, then you can get it. You do not automatically get the entire LibreOffice suite with Ubuntu. What you get is pieces of it. If you want to get everything, just install a package called LibreOffice with nothing after it. And if you do that, it will go get everything else. So you'll have the entire LibreOffice suite, but from they, they just have bits and pieces of it. We have had major improvements to the software application that comes with it. It's not quite the magazine view that they were talking about, but that will probably be backported once it gets uh, figured out. This is something that's going to get continuous support. So this is actually a very cool way to deal with software. Ubuntu does a really nice job at working with this kind of stuff. This is a, the GNOME software application. And then we have the GNOME desktop. They do a lot of distro tweaks to GNOME that I really like. They make it an extraordinarily usable environment. Uh, things like having the active desktop turned on already. That's really kind of nice. For a little while there, it looked like that everybody was just going to turn off icons on the desktop and it was going to go away. And now KDE is making that super easy to do. So people are you know, going to Plasma, the Cinnamon desktop. Linux Mint still offers that feature, uh, the Mate desktop does, and the Ubuntu version of GNOME has that already switched on by default, so I like that. And you can actually see your home directory here, and then they have the trash. And you can install GNOME tweaks, and then you can go in and change that. So let's take a look at the tweaks application, which I have already installed. So, yeah, it's under appearance. Now, it looks like that the desktop tweaks are gone out of uh, here, but you still have pretty much power over everything else. Um, so I guess they're controlling that somewhere else, right? Is that what the deal is? So what if I want to re remove trash? That's something I'm going to have to figure out here. We'll take a look at the settings here see if we have anything there this is the standard settings that come with Ubuntu it is in date and time okay I want out of details please I want the full list there we go that's how you do that so let's see universal accent access uh, notifications background we'll take a look at what backgrounds are shipped so far when I first installed it 
the only background I saw was the uh, the old background for Ubuntu 1810. And then I did an update, and then the new backgrounds came in. So we can actually take a look at what we've got here. Well, I kind of like those. There's a nice one. That's a nice one, too. So there you go. Huh, I'm going to have to dig around to see if you can turn those icons off and on. But there you go. See, I'm sure that I could probably right click and remove. Nope. Huh. Don't know how to deal with that. We'll figure that out somewhere down the road, though, right? Because that works in a different way than it does uh, on the older GNOME desktop that is an Ubuntu 1804 that still supported that feature. That feature, by the way, of seeing icons and having an active desktop is run by Nautilus. As a matter of fact, Ubuntu 1804 shipped with an older version of Nautilus 3.26 to keep that feature. So this functionality, this active desktop functionality now is no longer being handled by Nautilus because the GNOME developers dropped that and it's being handled by a plugin. So I guess you would have to go configure that plugin. Let's see if that works. You know, I always get off on these tangents while making these videos, gang. I can't help it. <laughs> you know, I just can't. Why, do, why is this thing going crazy on me? There we go. You typed the extra shut up. Okay. Um, let's see if we look under plugins or extensions. What we have here. Yep, desktop icons right there. So that's how we can figure. I figured it out, man. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. We can change the size. So we can show the trash can. So it does not show mounted volumes, which is something that I do like. If you plug in a, a drive, like a, a USB stick or an external drive, it will pop up on the desktop. That doesn't work with that particular extension, but that's okay. It's, it's all right. Not a big deal. We can get around that, right? We've got most of the functionality. So thank you to the Canonical developers for doing that for those of us who like to have active desktops. It is much appreciated. So what else do we need to look at here? I mean, there's not a whole lot of huge. We still get the Amazon little link here. If we click on this and then go shop on Amazon, that means that Canonical will get a little bit of what we spend at Amazon. It's a promotional thing. It's a way you can support the project if you want to. You can do that. Uh, yes, they do ask for a report as to what kind of hardware you are installing Ubuntu on. That still happens. Uh, one of the beautiful things about later versions of Ubuntu is they no longer ship with that god-awful, terrible Fluendo MP3 codec thing that I've talked about in past videos. That is a non-issue now. So thank you. That has been dropped. Uh, you, what that was is that if you wanted to play mp3 audio you would have to deal with degraded audio because of this particular package and then what they wanted you to do was go to Fluendo's website and pay $35 for quote unquote improved codecs when actually if you just removed that little Fluendo codec package then everything would play the way it was supposed to using standard GStreamer. So if you're using Ubuntu 18.04 and you've noticed that your, your MP3 files don't sound very good, that's why. Look for GStreamer 1.0-Fluendo. If you can find that package, you can do a search for it, get rid of it, and guess what? Uh, that Everything will work just fine. So that's not in here. I've complained about that in past videos. So there you go, gang. That is a look at uh, Ubuntu 1904 and yes I did install VirtualBox within VirtualBox to see how it would look. VirtualBox is usually a good gauge to see how Qt applications are going to render and looks like they have some nice Qt integration going on. 
the theme doesn't quite match up, but it's okay. It's no big deal. Uh, see, I also installed Ocean Audio, which is another third-party type download kind of application that is uh, written in Qt to see what that would look like and that came out uh, to look pretty good as well so kudos to the development team for making that uh, work out of the box whereas what I've had to do with 1804 was to go in and put a little hack in there to make sure that it would render properly at least get the font size right even if it doesn't follow the theme a hundred percent so it doesn't look like we're gonna have to do that in 1904 and by the time 20 04 comes along, which is the next long term support. We shouldn't have to deal with that either. So, there you go. Uh, thank you for watching the video. This is looking really promising. Uh, I have a feeling that I am forgetting to look at something or talk about something, but that's probably a good thing, and that's probably when I need to stop talking about <laughs> Ubuntu. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm no, I'm going to stick with what I got because I'm going to tell you, Ubuntu 18.04 has worked so well on my hardware, it's beyond belief. Uh, I have had very few issues with it. The only issue that I'm having right now is with VirtualBox itself, as I mentioned earlier. I've got a performance problem. Uh, that's. I have been told that it has a lot to do with the mitigating patches for Spectre and Meltdown, which really have taken a lot of performance away from virtual machines. The host machine here that I'm recording this on has two Intel Xeon processors in it, and for some reason or the other, it just runs very slow on VirtualBox. Hopefully, they're going to figure a way to fix that problem, because I'm not the only one that's having that issue with VirtualBox. A lot of folks are having really slow performance so you got oh uh, I, I will show you this before we get out of here that's what I wanted to show you so I'm gonna log out of my account here just to show you this one thing you know how on every social media site they went from having square little avatars to round ones it's like everybody decided, well, we don't like square anymore. We're not going to have a little square picture. We're going to have a little round picture. You know that? And I'm not really a big fan of that. Well, guess what? They've done exactly the same thing here in Ubuntu 1904. Your little face, little dot face file, which holds your avatar, which is supposed to be square. You have to have a little square uh, image there. It's usually a JPEG, little square JPEG and now they're rendering it round so I don't know whether that's progress or not or playing follow the leader can we choose I want a square one man thanks your feedback is always welcome you know that right uh, you can check out easylinux.com for more about Linux please join the the discussion at easy talk that is a forum that is free and secure and it's a lot of fun Please be sure to give Easy Linux a like on Facebook if you are a Facebook user as well. Back to the forum a little bit. I've had people ask me about who hosts the forum and what kind of forum is it. It is our forum. It is something that we developed on our own. It is hosted on our own server, and we have absolute control over it from the OS running on the server all the way down to uh, what goes on in the forum, and that makes it really secure and so therefore that is why we're doing that we're not worried about being on some other service that some big company somewhere could change at any time or there could be some giant security breach to put your yourself at risk no this is on uh, our own servers and we take care of it Jeremy O'Connell and I so that is what is the deal with that and before I completely wrap up the video I want to change the subject completely and I want to say a thank you to the folks at WZBB FM in Stanleytown, Virginia. Well, actually, their studios are in Oak Level, and it's uh, Martinsville, Rocky Mount, Virginia area, Franklin and Henry counties. I went up there last Friday for the 30th anniversary, got to tell stories on the air, got to meet a lot of people that I haven't seen in 20 some years and uh, uh, surprise surprise they threw me on the air and I got to do middays 
So I was there from 12 to 2 screaming and yelling. Now, I have been told that that was recorded, and I'm hoping to get some audio of that that I may post in a video. I am also waiting for pictures. They had a pro professional photographer running around taking pictures of all of us goofing off. So I may make a video and, and show that off and play you some of the uh, stuff that we talked about that day for those of you who are interested in that sort of thing. So that, that may be coming up very soon, but I just definitely want to say thank you to Gene Allen and everybody up there uh, because it was a blast. We had a good time and got in everybody's way that actually, you know, works there. <laughs> Stood around in the hallways, and they're running. It was funny. So anyway, it was a blast. It was so much fun. I'm gone, gang. We will do it again soon.